What's up, everybody? It's Priyo and Joni. So recently I watched this really well done uh, YouTube video called The Truth About Vinyl, Vinyl versus Digital. It's from a YouTube channel I follow called uh, Real Engineering. And basically, in a nutshell, their conclusion through this video was that a digital recording can basically sound just as good as analog. And uh, yeah, I found the video to be really good and I highly recommend that you guys check it out. And it even goes as far to explain why some folks think it sounds better. Now, along with that, there's a couple things I wanted to discuss about analog recordings versus digital recordings. Not too long ago, I made this video called Why I Hate the Technics SL1200 Turntable. And it caused a little bit of controversy and, and people, of course, as I expected, would be divided on this opinion. There was a gentleman by the name of DJ Odeed who actually created a rebuttal video. And one of his key points are, vinyl actually sounds better. These old, big, heavy records. That which, by the way, and yes, I'm gonna say it, sound way better than a WAV file or an MP3. This is a common opinion amongst a lot of vinyl purists and audiophiles. And to say something is better than something else, that's a subjective opinion. That totally depends on the perspective of each individual. It's not objective. The fact is, I completely agree in the sense that an analog recording, especially one pressed on vinyl, sounds different than a digital recording put onto CD or MP3 or any form of digital file. Now, does that contradict the video, the truth about vinyl? No, what they're saying is a digital recording can accurately reproduce an analog recording. That's totally different from saying a song that is on vinyl sounds exactly the same as the same song on a digital file. So basically I do agree with vinyl enthusiasts that an analog recording, especially when it's pressed to vinyl, sounds different from a digital recording. And I'll even go as far as saying, sometimes a song pressed on vinyl sounds a little bit more satisfying to me than its digital counterpart. Now, however, there are some folks who take it a step farther and they'll say, vinyl sounds better because it is more accurate and faithful to the original recording over its digital counterpart. Now that to me sounds like an objective opinion and it's something that we can break down and I'll show you why this statement is actually false. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys this experiment that you can either try at home if you have the equipment or do it as a thought exercise and you guys can decide which one is more faithful to the original recording, analog or digital. So with that said, Let's clear out any biases we have, any thoughts or conclusions we already have about which one is better, which one is more accurate, uh, analog versus digital. And let's explore one by one some criteria where we can objectively compare the performance of a recording on vinyl versus a recording on digital. So number one, stereo imaging. As some of you guys may know, the standard for music is two channels a left channel and a right channel. The relation between the two is called imaging. We have two ears. We perceive music in different ways based on how sound is imaged in a stereo field of speakers. If we want a piano to sound like it's coming from the left side of the room, the recording engineer pans the instrument all the way to the left. Left, your left. <laughs> if we want a brass section to sound like it's coming from the right side of the room, the recording engineer pans it to the right. If we want the vocalist to sound dead center, the engineer pans their vocals to the center. If we want the entire orchestra to sound wide as it does in the recording room or in the theater, the engineer uses two microphones, one pan to the left, the other pan to the right. Lastly, if we want an instrument, say a guitar, that is recorded in one channel, which is called mono, and we want it to sound wider and bigger, the engineer can take the single mono recording, divide it into two tracks, pan one to the left, pan the other to the right, and slightly nudge or take it off phase, delaying one track from the other, and your single centered mono guitar track now sounds wide in a stereo field. 
Now, why is this important? Because stereo imaging is not as accurate on all mediums. In a digital recording, when you pan an instrument to the left, it sounds completely silent and muted on the right channel. Try it at home. Record your voice, pan it to the left, burn it on a CD, then pan your stereo system to the right speaker when you play back the CD, and your voice is completely silent from the right speaker. On vinyl, it's a little different. What you have to understand is on a vinyl record, the needle, this is, this is gonna look funny, the needle sits inside a groove, ha 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 ha, and it's between two walls, you know? The vibrations that's indented in each two of these walls represents the left and right channel on a recording. The problem that happens in vinyl is that one side of the needle actually picks up the vibrations from the other side of the needle. A little bit of the left channel bleeds into the right channel, and a little bit of the right channel bleeds into the left channel. And that's why it's called channel bleeding. It's a form of sympathetic vibration. The left and right channels are close enough to pick up each other's signals. Now, I don't suggest recording your voice and spend the money to record your voice pan to the left and take it to a vinyl pressing plant and trying this out. But an easy way to try this is to grab a vinyl and digital copy of ACDC's Shook Me All Night. Now, if you're familiar with the song, you know that the opening guitar riff is panned to the right. And if you listen to the digital copy of this song, it's panned to the hard right. In fact, if you pan to the left, all you hear is the drums. Complete drums, not even a hint of the guitar riff in there. But on the vinyl version, if you pan to the left where the guitar wasn't panned to, you hear a little bit of the guitar in there, despite the recording originally being hard panned to the right. The fact is, the nature of the stereo imaging on vinyl is significantly more narrow than a digital recording. Is one better than the other? Well, that question is subjective to taste. But despite anyone's taste, the question being asked is, is one medium more accurate and faithful to the original recording over the other? The answer is yes, and that goes to digital. Now let's talk about loss of information. One of the mentalities of vinyl purists is that they believe that because digital is limited to the amount of information recorded, there is a loss of information in the recording process, unlike analog that in reality is unlimited when recording a waveform. I'm going to go back to the Truth About Vinyl video to explain this one. High quality digital audio data is typically sampled 44,100 times per second. Close inspection of the wave function produced from binary code shows that rather than the audio data being smooth and constant like real life, the audio data is jagged and technically non-continuous. Because there is an infinite amount of data between each second of audio, we have to sample the audio in regular intervals to minimize the size of our digital file. Comparing this to the smooth, continuous waveform that is imprinted in vinyl, you would think this might cause some loss in information. Whether there is a loss of information or not depends on whether the 44,100 sample rate is high enough to be functionally the same. An answer to this was proposed in 1928 in a pivotal paper published by Swedish-American electronic engineer Harry Nyquist and was subsequently proven by Claude Shannon in 1949. They simply found that to recreate a frequency, we only need to sample each individual wave at least twice. If not, the frequency will be digitized with a lower frequency. The maximum perceivable frequency a human ear can detect is 20,000 Hz, and so digital recordings with a sampling rate of 44,000 Hz can capture even the highest frequency possible. In a world where we keep going up in resolution from 1080p HD to 4K, you would think the market would start changing the standard in digital music, but in reality, there is no perceivable difference when you increase the resolution in audio when played back at the normal rate. I stress played back at the normal rate because, you know, someone might say and argue, well, I can hear the bits when you slow down the digital file. That's actually true. When you slow down your vinyl, it sounds a lot smoother when you hear the low frequencies of the slower record. And then when you slow down a digital recording, you can actually hear those little steps. I'm not arguing with that. It, it's really similar to when you zoom into uh, an actual physical photo taken on film and it looks blurry versus when you zoom into a digital photo where it looks pixelated and you can see all the little pixels. But I'm not talking about what's heard when things are slowed down. I'm talking about music and audio 
played at a normal rate. Now let's talk about the difference between a needle, which is a cartridge and stylus used on a turntable, versus a digital audio converter. So a fact about the stylus and cartridge that I believe audiophiles even agree with is that similar to microphones and speakers, different brands, models, and types have different frequency responses as well as output levels. And even two identical cartridges and styli, styluses, styli, I don't know what's plural. Even two identical cartridges and styli with identical vinyl records on identical turntables can still vary by a little bit. And that's even before the variables are affected by where on the record, where on the needle, and any sorts of interference that happens that can color the sound. Along with that, the difference in frequency response can really actually also filter off the upper and lower bands. For example, the Shure M44-7 is high output with a slight dip in the mid-range and a gradual cutoff from 18 to 20 kilohertz. While the Shure M44G, which is actually a difference in the stylus, same cartridge, it entails a lower output, but relatively flatter from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. DJs will admit some needles have more bass than others. So in essence, the model and condition of the cartridge and stylus heavily change the entire frequency EQ curve of a given record. On the other hand, a digital audio converter, which essentially takes a digital file and converts it to an analog signal that humans can hear from a speaker is stagnant, meaning no changes from the way it sounded coming in to when it's coming out. Now, not all DACs, digital audio converters, are identical, but they are more or less in the ballpark of a perfectly flat frequency response. As some audiophiles know, the real difference in a higher quality DAC is not so much its EQ, but more on how well it rejects the noise introduced from interference. Once in a while, when you plug your headphones into your computer or smartphone, you might hear a little bit of digital buzz here and there. But on the topic of reproducing the sonic fidelity that is faithful and accurate to the original recording, a DAC is not only the most accurate, but repetitively consistent. So basically needle versus digital audio converter, a digital audio converter wins in reproducing the most accurate and faithful reproduction of the original recording. So now let's talk about which one sounds warmer. So DJs and vinyl enthusiasts often describe the sound of vinyl as being warmer. So the word warm in audio can mean a handful of things, but in the case of vinyl, it is often described as being heavier in the lower frequencies, essentially bassier. For a lot of DJs, this is very much the case. And as DJ Odeed pointed out, um, I've played in the club where I switched from a record over to the Serato and it is not the same sound whatsoever. Let's explore why this is. Let's put aside the fact that cartridge and styli, as we learned earlier, introduces colorization to the frequency band. And let's focus on the environment of the playback gear. The vinyl turntable for most DJs sits inside a nightclub, usually on a solid surface. A turntable is usually designed to absorb some of the vibration from the speakers so that sympathetic vibrations are reduced. When low frequencies are too loud in the room, the needle picks it up and amplifies it. Then the speaker fires the amplified sound and back to the needle it goes. And this cycle is known as low rumble feedback. In an extreme case, the low rumble feedback sounds like a low frequency drone that won't stop and sometimes gets louder with time. Sometimes it can even come unexpectedly. You won't hear it at first, but then when you have a really strong kick drum, all of a sudden the low rumble feedback just keeps droning on. Many bars and nightclubs are equipped with subwoofer speakers, which are powerful low frequency speakers for more bass. And some steps are sometimes taken to reduce low rumble feedback from the subwoofers to the turntable. Low frequencies are very long waves and the sound pressure of low frequencies are very, very strong. Even with the best absorbent material the turntable could be sitting on, the sympathetic vibrations that are in the air are still strong enough to introduce some amount of low rumble feedback into the needle. If the feedback isn't distorting the playback too much, there is an acceptable, in fact, sometimes desirable 
amount of low rumble feedback. What happens is that the lower frequencies sound just a little bit louder. They have better low end. And the decay of the kick drum just gets a little bit longer. It creates this really big sound that could be described by some folks as sounding warmer. They have better low end. They have warmer sound. So what about folks at home who don't have subwoofers? Well, in the living room, most folks don't have professional or audiophile grade turntables. They're usually lighter record players with almost no absorbent properties to its construction. So in a small room setting, even folks at home can come across low rumble feedback. Their experience can vary between the undesirable drone to a light boost in the lower frequencies. They have better low end. Have you ever noticed that the music from the 1970s, 80s, and early 90s are significantly less bassy as music today, as they were recorded? One of the reasons why sound engineers back then were more conservative about the lower frequencies is because it helps counter the effect of low frequency feedback when folks play their records. Also take into account albums on long play records, known as LPs, were cut quieter and had a limited frequency range as opposed to a 12 inch single, which could be cut longer with their wider grooves. Furthermore, extreme amplitudes in low frequencies as well as high frequencies can cause the needle to skip and skate across the vibration waves, which could cause needle skipping or high frequency distortions. Generally, the more conservative amount of lower frequencies on older records was accumulation of the limitation of cutting methods, the limitation in the stylus performance, as well as the expectation that low rumble feedback makes up for the space of the lower frequency band. This is why digital versions of older music seem to be less bassy, but remastered versions, the lower frequencies are attenuated. The reason why newer music today has a fuller range from bottom to top is because the playback medium, CDs, MP3s, streaming, no longer has the issue of both low rumble feedback, needles, and cutting methods. While cartridges are created much more advanced today, eh, more or less, and cutting methods have improved, we still have the problem when we press newer music onto vinyl because the full range can really, really exaggerate the low rumble feedback. Sometimes in big professional projects, engineers are assigned to do a different mix and master specifically for vinyl, as opposed to the mix made for digital. More on that later. So does vinyl have a warmer sound? Yes, it does. Does it sound better? That's up to the listener. Now, is it an accurate and faithful representation of the original recording? No, it does not. Okay, so let's talk about noise. Now let's put low rumble feedback and interference type of noises aside. Noise can be anything from hums to hisses, pops and crackles caused by dust on the record. The loudest level of a consistent noise is known as the noise floor. And the relationship between the noise floor and the quietest part of the recording is known as the signal to noise ratio. Firstly, we know that digital audio files are completely immune to the cracks and pops from dust and dirt that you hear from a vinyl record. It's a characteristic of vinyl playback that folks learn to live with and some actually desire. Side note, there are plugins and audio files out there where you can add pops and crackles into your digital recording, which some producers do just to get that simulated analog playback sound. But in the case of the hisses and the hums, the consistent noise. Digital audio files played back with an average run-of-the-mill digital audio converter from a computer or iPhone generally have a significant lower noise floor than a vinyl record with the highest output needle available. In theory, a digital audio file has the potential to have a recording with very, very quiet parts with no audible noise. If such a record was done on vinyl, an extremely quiet part would be closer to the noise floor, making the hums, hiss, cracks, and pops way more apparent. So this means that the relationship between the quiet parts and loud parts in a recording known as the dynamic range is very limited on a vinyl record. So which one has more noise? Vinyl definitely has more noise. Does this type of sound make it more pleasing? That's up to the listener. Does the higher noise floor make the vinyl recording more accurate and faithful to the original recording? It most certainly does not. <laughs> in fact, in a digital recording, a lot of the noise that you hear 
is usually coming from the equipment. And in the recording itself, if it was recorded digitally, the noise is usually gated out or it's insignificantly quiet, minus 40 to minus 60 dB. Now, while the digital audio medium has a far greater potential for a higher dynamic range, in practice, this is not the case for modern recordings. Compression is the process of taking quiet parts, let's say the waveform, the quieter waveforms are right here, and making them louder and the louder parts quieter. This is why sometimes you can take two songs and they can peak at the same value. They're just, you know, on the meter, they're just as loud as each other, but one can actually sound louder than the other, despite them peaking at the same max. The problem with today's music is that we have this thing called the loudness wars and music is mixed and mastered to sound as loud as possible without perceivable distortion. This is really important for producers because if your song follows another song on the radio or in a mix, but your song sounds quieter, the natural human assumption is that it doesn't sound as good because it's not as loud. Now, the negative effect of so much compression is that it kills some of the nuanced detail in the audio known as transients. Transients are basically the little details in the sound. And when you compress something, you squash a lot of that detail away. And the, la and the lack of dynamic range or a really overcompressed recording can be really fatiguing to the listener, especially since it doesn't give them a break from all the loudness. And this overcompressed sound is sometimes associated with the digital recording sound medium. And it really has nothing to do with the playback medium. This is more of an issue with modern sound engineering techniques, and it gets falsely associated with the digital medium because it is a format that came along with it through time. So it's a false association. Now, setting aside the effects of low rumble feedback, if you take a song and you have a copy on vinyl and you have a copy that was downloaded and the vinyl version seems to have more dynamic range, that's probably most likely because the record label had the engineer make a separate mix and master for vinyl versus the one that's a little bit more compressed and louder for digital. And just because the format is digital does not mean a producer or engineer has to overcompress a recording. Producers like Armin Van Buren has stated in his masterclass that he renders two versions of his track. He does one version that's highly compressed and limited for distribution and streaming. That way the track will sound nicely when played with other commercial tracks. But on a second version, he does one where he takes the final limiter or compressor and he backs it off or eliminates it altogether, retaining the entirety of the dynamic range. He uses this version for when he plays on really, really big sound systems. This way, his really, really loud parts of his songs will have more of an impact after the quiet parts and it will be less fatiguing to the audience since it gives their ears a break and breathing room during the quiet parts. I digress. So basically, when you hear a recording on vinyl and it seems to be less compressed or has more dynamic range, it's not the medium because it's vinyl it's probably in the engineering. It's re-engineered, optimized for vinyl. Digital audio is more than capable of reproducing a signal that is far greater in dynamic range than the limited range on vinyl, especially with its higher noise floor. So basically, vinyl sounding uncompressed and digital files sounding overcompressed, it's not an effect of the medium that it's on. It's actually a result of engineering decisions, sometimes made because of the medium. The word distortion can have a really negative connotation to it, but it actually simply means change. And in this case, it's a change in the way the audio signal behaves. Electric guitarists achieve the sound by purposely clipping the guitar signal using an overdrive pedal or an amplifier. It can be a positive change or a negative change, and many times it refers to a change caused by clipping or a filter off of the frequencies. Generally, digital distortion sounds different from analog distortion. Digital distortion can have a very nasty clipping sound since the cutoff is very precise and very sharp. Digital distortion is generally regarded as unsatisfying and I don't disagree. It's easy to avoid digital distortion caused by clipping by keeping the file normalized below zero decibels. On vinyl, distortion can be achieved in multiple ways 
and also they behave differently. What makes a signal clip can be caused by multiple factors. Sometimes an amplitude is too much for the needle to handle and the signal will do what's called a soft clip. Multiple variables can affect how the distortion sounds, but sometimes the artifacts that come out aren't as harsh as you would hear in digital distortion. Also, as we mentioned earlier, we showed you how large amplitudes of low or high frequencies can make the needle behave oddly. The sound produced of a needle skipping is a bit smoother than what would be described in a hard, precise digital clip. Along with that, the end of the frequency response range of the needle doesn't have a sharp fallout at the end. The ends of the frequency response tend to have a cutoff, but doesn't necessarily disappear. Instead, it causes a smooth sizzle at the top end and a light little crunch at the bottom end. The sound is often referred to as erosion and Ableton Live actually has a plugin to simulate erosion. The fact is, distortions are generally less harsh on vinyl and can sometimes be considered desirable, at the very least, tolerable. Digital distortions are in fact more abrasive, however, can be completely avoided by producing the track at an optimal volume level, as well as the listener keeping the volume under control on their digital device. Vinyl does in fact handle distortions better, but does this mean it sounds better? That's up to the listener. But does having any type of distortion of any kind really accurately and faithfully represent the original recording? Therefore, a clean playback of a digital recording is closer if not identical to the original recording since it doesn't introduce any form of distortions at all. Now, if you still have some doubt as to which one is more accurate and faithful to the original recording, there's this little experiment that some of you can actually try at home. Parts of it are a little harder than others, and maybe the average person might not have the gear to be able to do this, but I know some DJs can. But whether or not you have the gear to do it at home, Treat this as a thought experiment and you can come up with your own theory as to what the conclusion will be. So let's take a recording that is on vinyl. Let's say the Thriller album, the number one selling album of all time. And let's say we take the Thriller song and we want a digital file of it. So for you guys who have a Serato mixer at home or any DJ mixer, a lot of you guys have the capability of recording a vinyl record onto a digital file. So if you can do this, try this at home. If not, just follow along. And basically, let's say we take Thriller, the song, and we put it on a digital file recorded from a vinyl record. Will it sound exactly like how it does on vinyl? Because if it can recreate the way it sounded played back from the record, then that proves that a digital recording can accurately reproduce an analog playback device. So let's consider all the criteria we talked about. When you record a song from a vinyl record to a digital file, does the stereo imaging change? Does it get narrower? Does it get wider? Is there any loss of information? Maybe, but since it is digital, but is it perceivable? You know, you have to listen with your ears. Aside from the noise that's already there, are there any noises that are introduced to the recording when you play back the digital file. Does the lower frequency sound warmer? Does it get bassier? Does it get less bassier when you play it from the digital file? Or does it stay the same? Aside from the noise that's already there from the playback device, which was the turntable, was there any new noises introduced? As far as the compression goes, does it sound more compressed or less compressed? Does the EQ change at all when you play it back? And lastly, are there any new distortions introduced in the digital file that wasn't already there from the vinyl recording? So basically, compare. Play your vinyl record and then play the digital file recorded from the vinyl record and tell me if it sounds different or if it sounds exactly the same. In a later video, I actually might try this part. So if let's say you find that they sound the same, it's pretty on point to say that a digital recording is accurate and faithful to the original recording, which was from a vinyl record. Now let's flip the roles. Let's take the Thriller album, but on CD, and let's say we want to press the song Thriller onto vinyl. Now, I know a lot of you at home probably have no capability 
of doing this at home. And for the most part, this is a really expensive experiment. And because of copyright laws, we might not even be able to legally do this. So as a thought experiment, let's say we recorded the digital copy of the song Thriller and pressed it onto vinyl from a CD. So once again, the things to consider, what happens to the stereo image? Maybe it's not that obvious, but generally it does get narrower. A little bit of the left, bleeds to the right, a little bit of the right, bleeds to the left. So what about the loss of information? Is there a loss of information going from digital and pressing it onto vinyl? At the best case scenario, I don't think there's a loss. However, signal degradation over time through analog wiring can affect it theoretically. At the very least, there's not much of a perceivable loss. So when you're playing back the newly pressed record versus the CD, what are some of the changes that you hear? Now you're hearing the way the needle behaves with record, the clicks, the pops of the dust. You hear a little bit more of the hum from the turntable. You get a little bit more low rumble feedback. So it might sound a little bassier, a little warmer, a little better for some people. They have better low end. Now, what about compression? Listen to whether the quieter parts seem to change between the two mediums. Now, what about noise? A way to really check for noise is actually to just stop the record, turn up the volume, and you might hear, well, some of it is feedback hum, but you might hear a uh, static noise caused by the equipment, like a little hiss. And then what about compression? Do the quiet parts change over the other? And then distortions. Is there any clipping or erosion that you hear on the new recording pressed on vinyl compared to how the original digital file sounded. So all these things. So if they sound exactly the same to you, then maybe we can say an analog recording on pressed on vinyl is accurate and faithful to the original recording, which in this case was a CD. But if you hear any changes or differences, then that means that the, the pressed recording on vinyl has been altered through the recording and playback process. If that's what you found, then no, a recording played back on vinyl is not as accurate and faithful to the original recording. And you know, like, don't take my word for it. I know that I'm leaning towards the side of digital is the more accurate one. That's clear in my whole video. So I would like for you guys to try this experiment. And if you found a different result, maybe, you know, we can discuss it. And whether you guys agree with me or disagree with me, if you guys have anything to add, you know, throw it in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. I don't disagree that vinyl sounds different. I just disagree that it's more accurate and faithful to the original recording. So, and of course, there's gonna be guys who love vinyl so much and all they're gonna tell me is they have better low end, they have warmer sound, and you can argue with me about it all you want all day. Anyways, I don't mean to pick on DJ Odeed. I really appreciate his response video to my video. Uh, I still want to have a discussion with him. So DJ Odeed, if you're watching this, uh, let's set up a time to do a face chat and record it. Anyways, guys, hope you guys like this video. If you found it useful, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, Prionjoni signing off. Have a happy holiday.